Hi guys, this is Angela from the London App Brewery, bringing you the final episode in series one of how to make apps with no programming experience. So in this episode, we are going to learn how to shake it, shake it. Fear not, there's no Beyonce songs coming up, but we are going to learn how to tap into the hardware of your iPhone and specifically the motion sensors in order to detect when a user is shaking their phone and to change the dice face images after they've shaken it, just like a real dice. So let's get to it. Let's just remind ourselves of where we left off in the previous episode. So we've got a dice app which responds to pressing of the roll button and it's able to change the dice face images because when the roll button is pressed, um, you can see that this method gets called and it will call change dice face. The code jumps over to here and it assigns a new random number for the first dice, a, another random number for the second dice, and using that random number picks out a random image for the left hand side and a random dice image for the right hand side. So if you have a look at the bottom here, I've added a to-do comment. Now this to-do comment is formatted very specifically um, and every time I write dash dash for commenting and then to do in capitals and then a colon sign everything afterwards gets added to my list up here so if you have a look here it shows manual view controller swift which is the file that i'm in currently and we can see all of the um the methods as depicted by an m symbol or the variables which has a P symbol. Um, and finally at the bottom, the to-dos that we've just added. So this allows you to keep track of all the things that you still have to do to complete your app um, at a glance. Okay, great. So other than to-dos, we can also add something that's called a pragma mark. So let's go and show you. So for example, if I head over here, just below this uh, bracket, and I write mark, all in capitals, colon, dash, um, let's say roll button methods. So pragma marks are a way of splitting up your code into chapters. So again, once you go back over here, you can see that I've got a line that divides the top and the bottom at the point where I've specified the pragma mark. And it's got a little title saying these are the roll button methods so that I can navigate to them easily. All right, okay, so enough about commenting. Let's actually get on and do this to do. So we're gonna type motion ended. And before you finish typing motion ended, the Xcode um, software is really gonna suggest to you the full set of code. And it says here, it tells the receiver, that's the phone, um, that a motion event has ended. Great, so let's press enter and it types it all out for you. And this is great because it, you manage to avoid so many typos doing it this way. So here they've highlighted this bit of code, which is obviously not code. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. So this chunk between this bracket and this bracket Everything inside gets called when the user stops shaking their phone. So motion ended. And what we want to happen is that they shake their phone. After they've shaken it, we want the dice face images to update. And we've got this neat little, uh, little method here called change dice face, which is exactly the functionality we want. So all we are going to do is just go ahead and call its name. So we're just going to put in change dice face in here. So great. Let's test it out. So for those of you guys who have a physical device, I'm going to talk to you a little bit later on about how to get this app loaded onto your phone. Um, but for now, we will settle with the simulator and we can go into hardware and we can click on the shake gesture, which simulates the shaking of the phone. So press shake gesture and it changes the dice face. Shake gesture changes the dice face. Great, so we've confirmed that our code is working just fine. So we can either press roll to change the dice face or we can press the shake gesture to change the dice face. Great, so that is your completed app. 
But now a lot of people ask me at this stage, you know, how do you know that motion ended has this functionality? You know, if I'm a complete beginner, how would I know to use this this method at all? So one way of finding out is that we can hold down the option key on our keyboard and you get this little um, question mark that comes up when you roll over certain things that can be found inside the Apple documentation. So we're going to roll over the motion ended method while we've got the option key um, pressed down and we're going to click as well. So here it shows you all the details to do with this um, method. So it says that it tells the receiver that a motion event has ended um, and it describes what a motion is and what an event is and the minimum iOS version um, that you can use this with um, and where it is declared. But what if I'm just a beginner? I've never watched the tutorials that you're watching right now. I've never heard of this function, uh, this method rather, motion ended. What do I do then? So I'm just going to open up my browser and head over to developer.apple.com. So we're going to click on resources and we're going to go and find documentation just right up here. This takes us over to the developer library and we are going to have a look at iOS 9. Okay, here we're going to search for shake. Oops, caps lock is on. So once you've searched for shake, you can see that the first thing that comes up is the UI responder class reference, and it's talking about shaking. So let's go and have a look at the documentation for UI responder. Okay, so here it says the UI responder class defines an interface for objects that respond to and handle events. Okay, that sounds like what we want. And if you have a look on the left hand side, you've got the tasks. So looking down here, we've got responding to motion events. So that's exactly what we want. And we can either choose to use motion began, which is when they've just started shaking or motion ended or motion canceled. So motion ended seems like a natural fit for the point where we want to change the dice face. If we change the dice face when motion began, they wouldn't be able to see it because the, the phone is still shaking in front of them. So let's go and click on motion ended and we can see the code base for the Swift version and the Objective C version of this. So we are programming in Swift at the moment. Um, so we are going to use this method. So you can change between the languages. I've got it on both at the moment because I code in both. Okay, great. So then we can go ahead, copy this method and put it over here into our code which, as you can see, is pretty much exactly what we've got up here. And the trick is to actually start typing rather than pasting it in. So you can see here, now we know that the func is a keyword and we know everything after the func immediately is the name of the function or method. So as we did before, you start typing motion began or motion ended and it will suggest you. And with one click of the enter button or the tab button, you can get Xcode to input it for you automatically. Now, if you're interested in getting this app to be physically downloaded onto your iPhone, you can head over to our tutorial called How to Sideload an App onto an iPhone, and we will teach you how to do that. Right, so there you have it. You've made an app that allows you to tap into the motion sensors, uh, that has methods and functions, that has randomization. You've learned a little bit about arrays um, and how to use arrays. Now, in the next series, um, we are going to give you a challenge. So it's been great giving you the tutorial, but we want you to try it out for yourself and fly solo. So I'm going to tell you um, what you need to do um, in the first part of the episode. And in the next part of the episode, I will show you how it's done. So the idea is that you get down to it and start trying some of the things that we've learned in this series. Okay, cool. So I hope to see you in our next series um, where you get to build an awesome magic eight ball that will tell you your future.
<laughs> who doesn't want that? And remember to subscribe and we will see you in the next series.